Narari Sarakar was very, very dear to the Vaishnavas. Srinivasacharya was a renunciate. He came to he came to Sri Kanda to get the blessings of Narahari Saraka. And Narahari told him that it's the Lord's desire that you marry. Now that's not an easy thing for a renunciate. He wasn't a sannyasi, but he had no concern with any of these family life. But Srinivasacharya understood what Narahari Sarakar speaks is what Lord Chaitanya wants. He's his intimate devotee. So Srinivasacharya married. This is how he was so revered and respected and loved by the Vaishnav community. And he's the one that installed after Sri Chaitanya. He's the one who installed different deities of Lord Chaitanya. He installed one in, in, in um, Katwa, and one in Srikanda, and one in another place. And taught people how to worship the deity of Lord Chaitanya. So Narottam Das Thakur, Shamananda Prabhu, Srinivasacharya, they were regularly going to Narahari Thakur to get directions, instructions, inspiration. But the love between devotees, devotees of the, the associates of Lord Chaitanya were gradually disappearing from this world. They couldn't they couldn't tolerate the separation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and others. And every time Narahari Sarkar heard about this, it would just put him in such deep meditation of love and separation from each of Lord Chaitanya's associates. And one of his dearest friends who lived not far in Kanaka Nagar or Katwa was Gadadhar Das. You know the story of Gadadhar Das. He was one of the most powerful preachers. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Nityananda Prabhu to leave Puri and go to Bengal to preach, he gave him a whole group of devotees to assist him. And the two principal ones were Abhiram Thakur and Gadadhar Das. Gadadhar Das worshipped Lord Chaitanya's deity with his disciple Yadunandan Chakravarti in Katwa. Narahari Thakur heard that in the month of Kartik, Gadadhar Das disappeared from the world. When Narahari heard this, <clears throat> he felt such deep love for this Vaishnava that he stopped talking to anyone. He simply went in seclusion and chanted the holy names and meditated on the Lord and his, vice, and his associates. And then, on this particular day, Narahari Sarakar disappeared from the world. His disciple Raghunandan Thakur and the other residents of Srikanda wanted to have a festival in honor of his disappearance. And at the same time, Gadad, or Yadunandan Chakravarti wanted to have a festival in honor of the disappearance of Gadadhar Das. So they decided to do it one after another. And they invited all the great Vaishnavas who were the associates of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. All of them who were still living. And they came... Srinivasacharya helped to organize Raghunandan. He had the whole town of Srikanda just 
united it with enthusiasm to welcome all the Vaishnavas and serve all the Vaishnavas, knowing that nothing would please their guru, Narahari Sarakar, more than that. And so they did. The festival in Katwa was glorious. Then all the devotees came to Jajigram and met Srinivasacharya and then came to Srikanda. The whole town of Srikanda, or let us say the village of Srikanda, came to greet the Vaishnavas with so much love, with so much affection. Because they were trained by these great souls. And who were some of the devotees that came? There was Krishna Mishra and Sri Gopal, who were the two sons of Adwaitacharya. And then there were Sri Pati and Sri Nidhi, two, two brothers of Sri Vastakur. And one very prominent personality, Virabhadra, the son of Nityananda Prabhu. Everyone in Sri Kanda was so pleased. They all came to greet with so much love, so much devotion. And Raghunanda and Thakur decorated the temple so beautifully. Just whatever he had, he tried to give the most beautiful festival experience to the Vaishnavas for the pleasure of his guru. On this day, when they all assembled, the great Acharyas all decided that they wanted to hear Srinivasacharya recite the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, Srinivasacharya was very much younger and junior to all of them. He never personally met Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda in the physical sense, and these devotees, many of them, were his confidential associates. So Raghunanda and Thakur arranged nice seat in, for all the dev devotees. And Srinivasacharya, he went to each and every one of these senior devotees and prostrated himself and put his head on their feet and begged for their mercy and blessings. And they all ordered him to speak Srimad Bhagavatam. It's not that he came in and thought, okay, I will now speak Srimad Bhagavatam. He felt totally unqualified. He, told, he felt totally inferior to all these people. He was there only to honor them, to surrender to them, and to serve them. And how was he surrendering to them, honoring them, and humbling himself before them? To follow their order, to recite Srimad Bhagavatam. Actually, this is the mood of a Vaishnav. Many of us give Srimad Bhagavatam class. <clears throat> the fact is, we're giving class in front of Radha Gopinath. They're not just statues. They're there. Can you imagine giving a Srimad Bhagavatam class in the presence of Radha and Krishna? <laughs> and also... Gornitai, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are standing there. We're giving a Bhagavatam class in their presence. And Gopal is there, lifting over down hill. And Lord Nirsingadev's there. And the six Goswamis are there. And Prabhu, Srila Prabhupada's Murti, he's physically, spiritually present within his Murti. Who are we to give a Srimad Bhagavatam class in front of Prabhupada? And all the assembled Vaishnavas. The nature of a true Vaishnava is a true Vaishnava thinks everyone else is more qualified than me. So if everyone else is more qualified than me, how can I be instructing superior personalities in, just in, in, in the confidential topics of Srimad Bhagavatam? Therefore, the way we should speak any class before the Vaishnavas 
is in the mood of Srinivasacharya. You know, in our heart of hearts, we're bowing down before the deities, we're bowing down before the Vaishnavas, and only because we're being ordered by Prabhupada, all because, only because we're being requested by the Vaishnavas, we are doing it as an act of surrender. The person who's speaking the Bhagavatam is actually doing it in a mood of surrendering, not only to Krishna and Radharani and the Guru, but also surrendering to all the audience, the Vaishnavas in the audience. So there's no pride. It's humble surrender. This was Srinivasacharya's mood. But then if you're going to surrender, you have to do it the best you can. You have to do it in such a way to please them. If you just say, oh, I'm just the most fallen and I'm just the worst and I'm just the least and I can't speak before you, so I'm not going to say anything or I'm just going to make a fool out of myself because I am a fool anyway. <laughs> that doesn't please them. What pleases them is if you really, really, from your heart of hearts, with everything you have, do the best you can. That's our service. So Srinivasacharya, his voice was sweet like a cuckoo bird. Kokila. And when he would recite the different passages, and he had so much emotion and so much devotion and such profound explanations of the, of the verses of the Bhagavatam, that all of his superiors were in ecstasy. And they just kept telling him, go on, go on, go on. Surrendering to them, he went on and on for hours and hours, practically the whole day. And everyone was sitting in rapt attention. He also worshipped the Bhagavatam with tulsi leaves and flowers and, ch and chandan. This was their spirit. The Bhagavatam is a deity of Krishna. The Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Krishna. The Bhagavatam is Krishna. He was worshipping the Vaishnavas, worshipping the Guru, worshipping Krishna in the form of Bhagavatam. That is what his class was, simply an act of worship, of humble devotion. That's the way we should speak. That's the way we should preach. That's real Vaishnavism. It's very deep. <clears throat> As he was speaking, the devotees were, dis at when he finished, the devotees were discussing with each other, the senior Vaishnavas, the associates of Lord Chaitanya. They were saying, one person said, I think that Shukadev Goswami is personally empowering Srinivasacharya. And another said, I think that Veda Vyas is personally empowering Srinivasacharya. And another said, it seems to me that Gadadhar Pandit, who taught him the Bhagavatam, is personally empowering him. And another said, as far as I could see, Lord Goranga Mahaprabhu himself is speaking through Srinivasacharya. In this way, where they, were, they were just praising him and glorifying him. And he was bowing down and offering all gifts to the others, just thinking, you're glorifying me, but I'm only empowered by your mercy. This is the loving exchange. <clears throat> Then they had Arti. Raghunandan took them all to the temple of Sri Goranga. And when they saw the decorations of the temple, so beautiful, so meticulous, so excellent in every regard, with flowers and with different types of pots and ornamentation, the temple was exquisite. 
in honor of Narahari Sarakar for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas and the deity. And after the Arati, they began the Kirtan. And it's very instructive how they began the Kirtan. Raghunandan personally brought in the coals, the murdangas, the karatals, and other instruments. And then Raghunandan Thakur had special garland, each one in an individual container that was meant for every devotee that was present. And Raghunandan Thakur personally, he and Lochandas Thakur, his god brother, they were both going to each and every devotee and placing a very beautiful scented garland. And then each in a unique container for that devotee. So much personal touch was there. It's not that there was just a pile of garlands and they just, you know, f- f- you know just ripped one off and threw it on. And, you know. <laughs> Everything was so personal. Because it's these personal details that touch people's hearts. Bhakti is about personal details to show love. And the more personal, the more affection it creates in the hearts of the Vaishnavas. So they were offering to Krishna Misha, to Sri Gopal, to everyone. And then um, Raghunandan offered garland to Birabhadra, the son of Nityananda Prabhu. And Birabhadra called for Srinivasacharya. Said, bring me a garland in Chandan. After Raghunandan put Chandan on the limbs and the forehead of, of Birabhadra and gave him garland, Birabhadra took a garland and put it on Raghunandan, who was very much, Raghunandan was very much humbled. This is the son of Nityananda Prabhu worshiping me. You see, when you put a garland on someone, it's an act of worship in Vaishnav tradition. It's not just a formality. And then Raghunandan, and then Virabhadra put Chandan, Chandan on him. And Raghunandan was so much embarrassed. What did he do? He turned around and put garland on Srinivasacharya and Chandan on him who was junior to him. So we find, again, reciprocation. The juniors were worshipping the seniors, and the seniors were worshipping their juniors, and the only way to respond to that is the juniors were worshipping their juniors. (laughs) Does that make sense? It was a joyous occasion. And then Raghunandan Thakur he worshipped every instrument. He put a garland, special garland in a special container made for every set of karatels, for every murdanga, for every little horn that they had in their kirtan. And a special little cup for chandan with camphor, with keshar, saffron. And he lovingly worshipped all the instruments. The instruments started playing. Devotees were singing very sweet, very sweet kirtan. The kirtan became so beautiful that the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu began to dance. Oh, how everybody was just overwhelmed with joy to see the sons of Adoita, the brothers of Srivas Thakur, all assembled, dancing together. Wouldn't you like to see that? Sri Gopal, you know the story from Chaitanya Charitamrita about Sri Gopal. Should I tell? During the cleansing of the Gundicha temple, after they hold cleaned the temple, they went to the, to the Narasimha temple and cleaned that 
prepare for the Ratha Yatra, the arrival of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya wanted to show that if you want Krishna to manifest within your heart, you have to make your heart a completely clean place. A perfect temple. So Lord Chaitanya took, turned to Sri Gopal and told him to chant the holy name in ecstasy. And Gopal chanted the holy name. He's the son of a doita. He was not very old at that time. He was a young boy. He fell unconscious. And Adoita came running to see what happened to his son. There was no sign of life in his body. It appeared he was dead. So Adoita Charya was calling, was crying out the holy name of Krishna in the ear of his son and calling, you know, come back, come back, you know, wake up, wake up. And Gopal was lifeless. And Adoita began to cry, and all the devotees came and gathered around seeing the plight of Adoita, he just, his son appeared to be dead in the middle of this most joyous occasion of cleaning Gundicha. And all the devotees were crying along with Adoita, screaming out the holy names of Krishna, and Gopal just laid there. And then Lord Chaitanya, he saw, this lasted for some time. Again, here it is, all the Vaishnavas coming together, weeping to see the plight of Adoita. He just lost his son. They're all chanting. Then Lord Chaitanya comes and says, Gopal, get up. And Gopal opens his eyes, breathes and stands up and starts dancing in ecstasy. Hare Krishna. And the devotees, seeing this, raised their arms and loudly cried out the whole night. So Gopal was very particular about giving Lord Chaitanya just the kind of prasad that he liked. I believe in Chaitanya Charitavrita. Lord Chaitanya ate something that wasn't so... He had some indigestion, and Gopal understood exactly what the Lord wanted and brought him some digestive prasad. <laughs> so personal, so thoughtful in their service. So here was Gopal dancing with all the Vaishnavas. And then there was Birbhadra. It explains in great detail in the Bhakti Ratnakar the beauty of Birbhadra. He was more beautiful than Kandarpa or Cupid himself. His every limb. He was the son of Nityananda Prabhu. And he had so much compassion. He was the primary branch of the tree of Nityan, of the of the of, of Nityananda Prabhu. Through him, millions and millions and millions of people attained pure devotional service. Birbhadra was dancing, dancing in ecstatic love as all the devotees were chanting. And soon all the villagers of Srikanda, all the devotees, they were all there in that kirtan hall. And hearing about this kirtan, people by the thousands from so many other villages, they all came crowding there to see. Now it's Ikadasi. The devotees hadn't eaten or drank anything all day. And now it's night, and the kirtan's going on, and Birbhadra's dancing. And the devotees, whoever was there, and all the guests and everyone else, they were thinking, they were lamenting that I only have two eyes to see Birbhadra and all these other Vaishnavas dancing. This is something very deep. They were relishing it so deeply. It was so sacred, so meaningful that they were lamenting. They only had two eyes to see. 
And there was a blind man who never saw the light of day his whole life. He happened to be there. And he heard about all the devotees just, just swooning to see the dance of Birbhadra. And this blind man asked someone, who is it that's dancing? And they said, it is Birabhadra. Vira means to destroy the wicked and Bhadra means to protect the pious, to protect the devotees. As soon as he heard the word Birabhadra, this man silently, this blind man, silently within his heart was praying so deeply I wish I could see him dance. He didn't want anything else in life. He didn't want to see the sun or the moon. He didn't want to see his mother or his father. He didn't want to see any of the things in this world. The only thing in all of creation that he wanted to see was Birbhadra's dance. But he didn't say anything to anyone. He just prayed. He longed for this within his heart. And Nityananda Nandana, Birabhadra, could understand his prayer. And as everyone was watching, Birabhadra glanced upon this blind man. And as immediately upon his glance, the blind man's eyes opened and he could see everything. And seeing the beautiful form of the son of Nityananda Prabhu dancing in ecstatic love for Krishna, this blind man went wild. And when everyone else saw this, this connection, there was a massive ovation of joy chanting the holy name. Dancing went on and on and on through the night. It was getting later and later. Kirtan was so sweet. The holy name was just overwhelming everyone. And the joint relationships of all the devotees chanting in the hearts, they were all longing to see Lord Chaitanya and his associates. During the kirtan, devotees were crying out in separation the different names of Lord Chaitanya and his associates. They were crying out, Goranga, Nityananda, Gadadhar, Srivas, Adwaita, Haridas Thakur, Swarup Damodar Goswami, Ramananda Rai, Murari Gupta. They were crying out, Gadadhar Das, Narahari Thakur. They couldn't bear the separation from these great souls. And as they were chanting together, they were crying in separation. And Lord Goranga could not resist their devotion. He could not restrain himself from satisfying their desire because they were so fixed with this one desire to be reunited with the Lord. Suddenly, like a flash of lightning, instantly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested in the middle of the kirtan. And he personally pacified each and every devotee. He eliminated all of their miseries and drown them in an ocean of happiness. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing amongst all the Vaishnavas as they chanted the holy names. The Lord disappeared. And the kirtan went on until Mangalarti. 
after Mangalarti. Raghunandan Thakur, who was singing so sweetly, was capturing the minds of all the devotees as well. He asked the senior Vaishnavas, how would you like to observe Dwadasi today? And they said, we would like to all sit together and partake of the Mahaprasad of Sri Goranga. So Raghunandan Thakur told the devotees, now you go to your personal rooms that we have arranged for you. Raghunandan Thakur, so nice, he arranged nice rooms for everyone. And he had individual personal servants attending for the needs of every single devotee. Like Goranga Priya Prabhu. Every, every single guest had a Goranga Priya right there with him. Prabhu. And Sri Sachi Nandan Prabhu also. And guest reception. Very, very. This is this is this story is the inspiration of and the Ketari festival of our guest reception department actually, because this is Vaishnav culture. <clears throat> and then Raghunandan Thakur arranged for a wonderful feast to be cooked. The finest cooks of Sri Kanda made a magnificent feast. And they brought it to the pujari and the pujari put it on the altar and offered it all to the deity of Sri Goranga. Then they had the arti. And after the arti, all the devotees were given nice seats in the temple, in the prasadam area. And they all sat down eager for prasad. Because after all, they fasted the whole day before and the whole night they were dancing. As all the devotees sat down to take prasad and were being served, they asked Raghunandan, please take prasad with us. He said, no. I'm happy. I'm deriving the greatest pleasure just seeing you eat and being part of serving you. So they honored that. So as they all sat down to begin to eat prasad, Raghunandan just Privately, he took a portion of the Mahaprasad of Lord Chaitanya and brought it to the solitary place where his Guru Maharaj, Narahari Sarakar, would perform his bhajan. There was a little a wooden seat where Narahari Sarakar used to sit in the little room that he would do his devotion. And Raghunandan brought the garland of Lord Chaitanya and put it before the seat and offered it to him. Took some chandan and, and put it before the seat to offer to his guru. Then he brought the plate of, of the Lord's Mahaprasad and placed it before his guru. Then in the room in front of his guru's seat, he sat down in meditation and offered the prayers invoking the offering of prasad. And after meditating on his Gurudev, he went out of the room and closed the door to allow his guru to take the prasad in private. After some minutes, he knocked on the door and opened it with a pot of water. He brought in this is how personally he was, even though his, it was just a seat. There wasn't even a photo or a deity or anything. It was just the seat, the tadit, the paraphernalia of the guru, which is not different than the guru. He came in with a pot of water to wash his guru's hands and, and water for his guru to wash his mouth. And when he opened the door with that pot of water, he saw... Narahari Sarakar in a celestial body sitting there. Raghunandan Thakur 
his heart just erupted in ecstatic love. After so long of feeling separation from his guru, his guru was sitting right there to reciprocate with his love. And then Narahari Sarakar physically disappeared. And Raghunandan Thakur in great ecstasy. He did a seva. <laughs> he washed his guru's hands in meditation. He washed his guru's mouth in meditation. Took the plate off. And then put his head on that seat as if he was putting his head right on the lotus feet of his own Guru Maharaj. And even though he's in so much ecstasy, unimaginable ecstasy, he ran back to the Prasadam Hall to help serve all the Vaishnavas. And they were enjoying like anything, loudly saying, Hari, Hari, because, hey, hey, hey. because the, the preparations were so wonderful and offered with so much devotion and served with so much devotion. It's not just the food. Every aspect of it is what makes it pleasing to the heart. You see, when you serve Vaishnavas, you're not just trying to please their palate. You're trying to please their heart. And how much energy and attention and love and devotion we put into preparing the food and how much energy and love and devotion we, to make the whole prasadam hall very clean and nice, not cluttered. And to how much love and devotion and energy we put into serving the devotees with so much affection, so much personal affection. All these things together is the culture of pleasing a Vaishnava's heart. This is how Raghunanda and Thakur organized this feast. And Virabhadra and, and the, you know, all of the great associates of Lord Chaitanya and all the other devotees, they were just overwhelmed with pleasure. In fact, before Raghunandan came in, they were all praising Raghunandan Thakur, praising him. And when he heard them praising, he became very embarrassed. They were saying, this Raghunandan, everything about him, He's such a great soul. The way he dances, the way he sings, the way he's so humble and so polite, the way he's so, he's so compassionate, even to the, even to the most fallen and, 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 and poor and suffering people. Everything about him is so pleasing. So after everyone finished their prasad, they insisted, Raghunan, and you take prasad. He said, no, no, I have to serve the servers. And Srinivasacharya and the others who were serving, he served them. And after all of everybody else ate, he sat down and ate prasad. <clears throat> then in the evening, they came for the darshan, and they had kirtan. And they chanted half the night. And then the other half the night, they all went to take rest. And the next morning after Mangalarti, the senior devotee said, now we have to go. And Raghunandan Thakur begged them, please, please stay a couple more, two or four more days. Please stay some more days. And because he wanted to serve them so deeply, they couldn't leave. They had to stay because there was so much love. They were all conquered by Raghunandan's love. They said, all right, we will stay. He said, we're making another arrangement today. All the houses in Srikanda, they're all going to cook for you. So they all came the next day, noon, and all these preparations from all the devotees' houses came. And they all took prasad and then spent the day talking about Krishna. And then had more Nam San Kirtan and more Nam San Kirtan and Kirtan. 
And finally, when it was time for them to leave, Raghunan and Thakur offered each and every devotee individual special gifts, garlands, and such deep loving words of affection. And the whole town, the whole of Sri Kanda went to to the river as the devotees were getting on their boats to cross to depart. This is how the disappearance day festival was celebrated of Narahari Saraka in Srikanda. And we are celebrating it today 